little magic's going to happen. Not really. It's not magic, but it's calculus. Okay. Um, so we are going to do the exact same thing using what we call U substitution. We're going to do the exact same problem. We're just going to do it a different way, a quicker way. Now, it doesn't look quicker because I have the steps written out, but I know y'all like steps and you want to look back at it later. So here are your steps for U substitution. Okay. Same problem. We let u be the expression whose derivative also appears in the problem. Okay? Typically, your u's are going to be expressions that have exponents. They're going to be expressions that are under radicals. They're going to be expressions inside trig functions. Those are typically going to be the things that we let um, u be. So in this case, our u is going to be x squared plus 1. Okay, Our u is going to be x squared plus 1. Not just the x squared, but the x squared plus 1. So after we determine what u is, we need to take the derivative of u with respect to x. So if we take the derivative of both sides here with respect to x, the left side would be du over dx. The derivative of the right side with respect to x is simply 2x. Pretty much all we're going to do to that expression in step two is that we're going to move the dx to the other side. Right now it's in the denominator, so to move it to the other side, we multiply both sides by it. So essentially what we get is that du is equal to 2x times dx. Well, does that look familiar? That's in our original integral. Okay, so... Step four, we are going to substitute the results from step one and step three into the original integra integral, and then we're going to integrate with respect to u. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look back at the original integral, and I'm just going to start at the left side, and I'm going to write things down um, and change them as necessary. So obviously my integrand is still there. Okay, I gotta have that. That's the whole point of this process. Now, x squared plus one, I said that was u. Okay, that expression was squared, so now we have u squared. And then that 2x dx right there from step three, we saw that that was equal to du. So I'm going to replace 2x dx with du. And now we're supposed to integrate, but our variable's changed. It's changed to u. It really doesn't matter. We still, the process is still the same. It's just the variable looks different, okay? Um, so what is the antiderivative of u squared? Um, u to the third over 3. And this is an indefinite integral, so we got the plus c on. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to do is we need to substitute our u back into the expression because our original integral was in terms of x. So we don't want the answer in terms of u. We want it in terms of the original variable. So our u was x squared plus 1. That expression is cubed, and it's over 3 and it's plus c. Now, I know that doesn't look anything like what we got when we did it in the warm-up when we multiplied everything out. But, if you raised x squared plus 1 to the third, you multiplied by itself three times and divided by three, you would get the same expression. Okay, you would get the same expression. I promise. Um, doesn't really look like it, but you would. All right. Um, 
In this case, we don't need to simplify. I don't want you to multiply that all, all the way out. The answer choice, I promise you guys, the answer choice on the AP exam, if they give you that question, that's going to be your answer choice. It is not going to be, it's, it's not going to look like that. Okay, it is not going to look like that. It is going to look like this expression right here because they are asking, do you know how to do the process of U substitution? Pretty much, okay, is what they're testing right there. Now, just like anything else, you can take the derivative of this to check it. Okay, take the derivative. Um, so that would be, let's see here, we've got one third in front. Chain rule, bring down the exponent, keep the inside the same. Subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the constant is 0. Is this our original expression? And it is. x squared plus 1 squared times 2x was the original expression we were trying to integrate. Okay. Now, do you have to do step 6? No. But it is an easy way to check and make sure that you did the, the process correctly. Okay. It is an easy way to check. Okay, a little weird, but it is going to make life a little bit easier, and it's going to allow us to take the integral of more things. Okay, so let's look at uh, an example with trig in it. Okay, we want to integrate 5 times the cosine of 5x with respect to x. Up until today, we couldn't do this because it wasn't just the cosine of x. It was the cosine of 5x. We couldn't anti-differentiate that. So, we should be thinking u substitution. So I need to pick a part of this equation who, when I take the derivative, will give me some other piece that, that shows up. Now, typically with trig, as I mentioned this before, typically with trig, it's going to be your angle. Okay, it's going to be what's inside the trig function, usually. So, I'm going to say my u is equal to 5x, because when I take the derivative of that with respect to x, it's 5. Well, guess what? We have a 5 somewhere else in the problem. Now, I do need to solve that for du. So let me go back to my problem. I'm going to integrate. That 5 there in the front, the 5 in the dx is going to be replaced with du. I didn't do anything to the cosine. The 5x is equal to u. Um, usually, 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 mm -hmm. yes, okay, so, <clears throat> I'm going to go from left to right, grab my integrand, 5, okay, does it show up somewhere over here, it does, when I pair it with the dx, 5 dx is the, so I'm going to replace that, then I'm going to add my cosine, there's no cosine over here, so I'm just going to drop that down. My angle, 5x, was my u, so I'm going to replace the 5x with the u. Now I can integrate that. I know what the antiderivative of cosine of u is. It is what? Sine of u. Sine of u plus c. Now eventually we are going to do this with definite integration, but right now we're just doing indefinite. Okay. <clears throat> and then we don't want u. We want it to be the original expression, so we got to go back over here and say u was 5x, so put it back in there. Okay? And again, you can do a quick check, take the derivative. The derivative of sine of 5x would be cosine of 5x times 5. All right? Because you got to take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of a constant is 0. That is our original expression. Okay? Just not in the same order, but y'all know that 5 goes in front anyways. Okay. Okay. Let's do a couple more examples. Get the hang of this. Okay. Example three. Similar, 
but not exactly to our first example. x times x squared plus 1 squared. So, our u needs to be, again, x squared plus 1. On the very first one? Yeah, because the derivative of, a, of it was 2x, and 2x was another piece of our puzzle, so to speak. No, you can't. Its derivative has got to be another piece of the problem. Okay? Hang on. That, that's, that's, where, that's why I didn't say yes to your previous question. Okay? Just, just stick with me. Okay. Typically, okay. Typically, when you are picking u's, okay, if it's a trig function, it's usually whatever's inside the trig function. Okay. If there's a square root involved, it's usually whatever's under the square root. If there are exponents, if it's like a binomial square, it's typically the binomial. Okay, because that's what the problem is. Well, I think I have an example like that, actually. But the key is, when I pick u, its derivative is not always exactly the rest of the expression, but it should be somewhat related to the rest of the expression. Okay, so just stick with me right here. When we take the derivative of this with respect to x, we get 2x, correct? We don't have 2x in our problem, we just have x. That's okay, we can fix that. Okay, so when I solve this, and we're used to multiplying both sides by the dx, okay, that's great, but I don't have 2x in my problem, so how about I move that to the other side? Multiply by a half. So we've got 1 half du, is equal to x dx. That's okay, because I can introduce a, a, a scalar multiple over here. That doesn't make integration more complicated. Okay, scalar multiples are no big deal. Okay, so let's, um, let's go back and, and substitute into our expression. We've got the integral. x dx is equal to one half du. I'm going to put the one half in front of the integrand so I don't have to deal with it. Okay, we can put scalar multiples in front of the integral. Stick the du on the end. What do I have left? I've got my x squared plus one squared. Well, x squared plus one was my u, so that is u squared. I'm going to keep my color coding going here. Yeah. Can't remember exactly what I just said, but oh, the integrands. I thought I did when I first introduced it. Maybe I just said it and I didn't write it down. Yeah, but because I usually don't talk about that symbol, it's like it's just there. I don't usually talk about it, but I figured I would mention it explicitly here. Okay. Now we just have to anti-differentiate, which, um, by the way, is the step that most of you guys forgot on the quiz today. Um, on number two, you split the absolute value up, but you didn't anti-differentiate. You just plugged in the limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two's wrong. Seven. Okay, so here's our answer. Okay, here's the answer. You got to substitute it back in. Got to substitute it back in. 